um, high, um, that was the point where the robot was supposed to talk, but apparently that's not happening now. So you've already had that intro, happy days. Um, so I'm Jen Barrett. I'm doing this a little bit earlier than I was expecting, so apologies for the um, slightly rushed kind of, whoa, what's happening? Um, so yeah, I'm Jen Barrett. That's my Twitter thing. Um, I'm British, you may have noticed. Um, <clears throat> so I started out being a designer, and about six years ago I got into coding, uh, mainly focusing on front-end, iOS, that sort of thing. A little bit of back-end occasionally, if I have to. Um, and I've worked in various places, I've run my own business, I've worked in digital agencies, I'm now working in a think tank, uh, my first venture into the non-profit side, which is lovely. And um, basically, I'm on a Ford Mozilla Open Web Fellowship and the first cohort. And if you want to apply, give me a shout because like, they're opening up applications again. So that would be cool. And um, I am based at the Open Tech Institute in DC. So yeah, and I'm talking about using bots to improve humanity and the various ways in which they're currently being used, the ways they could be used, and just all the fun of bots, apart from when they don't work, like this one. Um, okay, so I am also an opinionated woman online, and um, like most people, uh, they, I kind of recognize that their online communities have a problem, essentially. Um, <clears throat> that problem being that social justice issues and talking about them anyway online results in you playing two roles. One is a troll fighter, which is and all that stuff that it brings with it, um, and the other one is a teacher. <clears throat> Um, now, raise your hands if you've dealt with any of these. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, 101 questions. 101 questions. No. Okay. It's not going to work. Excellent. Uh, okay. So, basically, um, some of the questions came up actually earlier. Things like, uh, why isn't reverse racism a thing? And that sort of basic level questions stuff. Questions like, hello, what does this gender mean? Why can't I say hey dudes to a mixed gender group? <coughs> and there's the demands and protestations like, tell me why reverse racism isn't a thing. Hiring marginalized <coughs> people means lowering the bar. Having a code of conduct makes it look like there's a problem. So you've all heard most of that stuff. I'm really glad that eventually worked, but okay. Um, so... Yeah, everyone's heard of those at some point and has had to deal with those and has just gone, this is tiring, please just go away. Um, <coughs> now, the book, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, science fiction book, uh, coined the term kipple. And the definition of kipple is not going to work at all. Uh, so the definition of kipple is essentially uh, detritus which proliferates. Um, and when it's left on its own, it builds up and up and up, and it takes energy away from non-kipple, which is essentially your valuable work in moving social justice issues forward. And the emotional labor of this troll fighting and hand-holding is what I think is basically kipple. And kipple leads to exhaustion and burnout. So the solution here, um, as far as I can, or one of the potential solutions, is... Kipple is essentially dealing with repetitive actions over and over again, and that is why it's tiring. Now, code is obviously good for dealing with repetitive actions, right? We've all automated something at some point um, just to deal with the stuff we don't want to have to do. So, hence, bots can help deal with Kipple. And in this talk, I'm going to focus particularly on two main online environments, uh, both of which have different requirements. Um, which I'm hoping most people are, are aware of and have used um, in some way. So, raise your hand if you've used Slack at all. Yes. It's a big thing, everyone. Yeah, cool. Um, so, Slack is obviously good for workplaces. It's generally involved in common interest communities, I think. Uh, so, open source projects and workplaces, that sort of thing. And... It provides a basic bot setup already built in. And anyone can go ahead and do this unless you're restricted by admins, in which case, go and tell your admin off, basically, because you should be allowed to do this. Um, so literally, you go to the URL of your Slack channel um, or your Slack group, 
uh, forward slash customize forward slash slack bot. And you've got the basic trigger and response setup. So for example, if I say, hey guys, it's still not gonna work, great. Um, so if I say, hey guys, it will say, why not use comrades or why not use colleagues? Why not use people of all kinds? That sort of thing. It's, you've got your basic thing going on. Um, and you can put in multiple triggers and you can have multiple responses chosen at random. It's very, very easy to do. You don't need any programming knowledge. You need to be able to type in a URL and that's it. Uh, the only problem being that it's just restricted to public Slack channels. So some of the uh, feedback I've had is that it can be a little bit public shaming, which take that as you will. Um, now also raise your hand if, <clears throat> if, you, um, if you write JavaScript or you understand JavaScript, have anything to do with JavaScript. Excellent, this is great. Um, so there is also a, a bot framework that has been released that is based on Node, which if you understand JavaScript, you can do Node basically, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so it's, yeah, it's called BotKit. I will put links out at the end, so don't worry about all of this, but um, it's at howdy.ai forward slash botkit, and it looks really easy to set up. I'll be honest, I haven't done it myself yet, but it's literally like npm install botkit, that kind of thing, great. Uh, and it can send direct messages. So there's some really good potential Slack bot uses. Um, so for example, you could have some statistics running to identify when diversity training is needed for particular people who are using certain words a lot, that sort of stuff. Um, uh, also, you could also have, if, you, if your group tends to feel it's a bit public shaming to do it in the public channel, you could have a three private strikes before it goes public, something like that. Um, and also, you could have it, if you have an open source project and you have a code of conduct, any new starters that come in automatically get taken through the code of conduct. That sort of potential use is quite handy. Um, so at the moment it's being used in a couple of places, uh, both the basic setup and the more customized version. Uh, and they're being used to create more inclusive communities and workplaces. And so far it seems to be going quite well. So uh, 18F, who are a digital services agency inside the US government, um, I'm hoping most people are aware. I wasn't before I came over here, but it's, you know, I'm foreign, so it's fair enough. Um, so they use the basic Slack setup, and they recently wrote about the implementation of Slackbot to challenge their language use and how it's had a really good effect so far. Um, so that's on their blog. Again, link at the end. Uh, an open source community that I'm aware of that's using a slightly more customized version uh, is something called Hoodie. Um, they are basically, they provide a framework that is a no backend system. And that's the first place I ever saw it used. The reaction, again, has been really good. And they have a public gist of responses that people can go through and they can like, create their own from that and get ideas of how to, how to challenge these language uses in a a good way, basically. Um, it's also customized to work on their IRC channel and they have some really great future ideas for it. So that's really one to watch. Uh, okay, so the other online environment, Twitter. I'm guessing most people are aware of Twitter in some way, uh, if not using it. Um, obviously very different environment to Slack, uh, mainly because lots of strangers, different values, Little to no common interest, mostly, as well. And the roles of troll fighter and teacher can actually be like far more intense and dangerous. So one tactic is automated bots. Um, not the spam bots that you normally see that tweet out daily news stuff and you just kind of end up blocking them and they get annoying. Um, in, at the end of 2014, Randy Harper created um, an automated bot that would basically randomly assemble bits from her real account and tweet them out as actual tweets, basically. And uh, it kept the Gamergate trolls occupied for a while. Um, the, the trolls <laughs> argued with it, so, so that's great. Um, technically, it passed the Turing test. You could kind of say that, so that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> So, so that was, that's one really fun news. Um, but it goes back even further than that. In 2010, there was a bot that was created to challenge climate change skeptics, uh, a guy called Nigel Leck, 
created it because uh, he was just fed up of having the same old arguments over and over again. So basically, though, his bot was a bit more aggressive in terms of it would scrape Twitter for certain phrases and words, and then it would respond to them. So it didn't wait for a reply. It didn't wait to get triggered. It just went straight in and was like, hey, you should look at this, basically. The only problem there being it couldn't detect any irony. So there was some false positives, and <laughs> people were a bit like, no, 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 I, I'm totally on board. Like, I'm an environmental activist. Why are you telling me that I'm wrong? Um, so, but it did have a whitelist thing that it would then add people to if they agreed. So that's fine. That's one way around it. But unfortunately, its aggressive nature meant that it got suspended. So that's unfortunate. Um, but then in 2012, the 101 atron bot was created uh, by Courtney Stanton. And that took a slightly different approach in that you looped it into your conversations to deal with the stuff for you. Once you realized that you were, you were using too much energy on this one particular conversation, it, you just looped it in and it took it there from, to, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, I get my teeth in. Um, so, uh, yeah, it avoids the, sp the spam suspension problem because it only responds, it never actually initiates. The, you have to follow a pattern of, hey, at 101atron, tell username about keyword, essentially. So an example of this feminist bot, you're really not going to play, are you? Damn. Um, okay. Would be 101atron, tell at person why rape jokes aren't funny. And it would then respond with a link to an explanation, so you don't have to deal with all of that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't tweet anymore. Um, it seemed to stop a, a few months ago, but uh, it worked nicely as a proof of concept. And happily, it then led on to becoming a framework. And the most use recent use of this framework is for the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, Courtney Stanton, um, Create, uh, got with Darius Kazimi, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but he created the Harry Potter sorting bot, if you've ever seen that. You follow it and it puts you into a Harry Potter thing, and yeah, it's fun. Um, I spend too much time on it. Um, so they started something called the Field Train Organization, <clears throat> and the 101atron became a framework, which, I jumped ahead there, uh, which then became the Stay Woke bot, which is still going, thankfully. And essentially, it improved on the original by allowing you to update it from a Google spreadsheet, which is just fantastic because Google spreadsheets obviously have an API, so you can, you can give it to non-technical people and they can automatically get this thing working. It's brilliant. Uh, at the moment, it currently tweets to new followers, comparing them to icons, but they have future plans to include basic questions. So for an example, um, it's going to eventually say, so you loop it in and it says, stay woke bot, tell person why the Confederate flag is a symbol of racism, for example. <laughs> and it would then deal with that for you. Like I say, lovely, so helpful. Um, okay, so I'm running out of time, yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, so responses so far have been kind of varied. Uh, like I say, on Slack, it's been generally quite good. Uh, on Twitter, it's been less good. Um, but generally, despite them across the board being labeled as bots, whether you're on Slack or you're on Twitter, you can tell that it's a bot, right? It's not, it doesn't take that much detective work. And yet, people tend to get way more argumentative with this stuff without even actually looking to see whether they're arguing with a person or not. So that's, yeah, quite funny to watch anyway. Um, so there is that. Um, okay, so generally on Slack, people get either apologize to the group, that's one of the reactions I've seen, which is quite nice, um, or they ignore it and they just do better in future. And again, having a customized setup could work well to, to analyze just how, um, how much improvement is being seen in your team on that side. Um, okay, so we're near the end, it's all good. Um, so a couple of potential uses that I'm disappointed that I haven't seen yet. Uh, IRC channels. Everyone knows codes of conduct are going into IRC channels. Open source communities are going, right, we have an IRC channel. We need to have a code of conduct for that kind of communication as well. Uh, for those IRC channels, basically old version of Slack. That kind of, that's the way I understand it. Um, <laughs> but without GIFs. 
<laughs> Why would you? Um, anyway, so uh, there's a clear opportunity here for code of conduct violation monitoring. Uh, also, continuous integration. The Hoodie are planning to build it into their continuous integration workflow so that commit messages are checked for problematic language before they're accepted. And also, it would be nice if maybe Twitter approved certain bots, right? Twitter knows it has a harassment problem. Everyone knows that Twitter has a harassment problem. This could be a way of dealing with it. Maybe they should whitelist certain bots that are run by activists who don't want to deal with Kipple anymore. Just thinking. Um, okay, so that's basically most of it. Um, I'm, yeah, I had some more stuff, but it's fine. Uh, one last point, though, I just want to say, so a friend of mine, Kate Houston, likes to say this, uh, say no to thankless emotional labor, which is fantastic and has helped me a tremendous deal. But I would also like to add, build a bot to do it for you. Don't just say no, automate that stuff, because it's so much easier. And it's fun, so yeah, cool. Uh, links. <laughs>